Okay, um, let's see if this runs a little bit better this time, um, after I actually check the settings before recording. <laughs> um, I wanted to make a video that the Gigabyte server, the G482Z51 server, is online. It is not 100% complete yet, but it is online. So, we got the replacement power cables um, in the mail today. Got those popped in, and boom, all the GPUs are detected. Everything is off to the races. Now, what are we waiting for to be able to call the server 100% complete? The processors are still in route, so this is still running the 7642s from the file server. So um, while still functional, these uh, processors need to be returned to their rightful home inside the file server. Um, and then the other thing that I've got going on is that I'm having a very weird USB issue. And this USB issue, I really can't nail down. Um, virtually what's happening is if I plug a USB hub in, so anything that branches away from one connection at a time, I get very weird stops, hitches, starts, device disconnected, reconnected, all that good stuff. So I am not sure what's going on. I see other people having this issue, but I don't see any resolutions to it. So um, I'm going to continue to dig into this and see what's going on. I've done, as best I can tell, I've disabled all the power management features. I've disabled anything that I could think would be causing this, and I'm still having the issue. So really not sure where it's coming from. And it doesn't matter if I'm plugged into the motherboard or if I'm plugged into an add-in card, they both do the same thing. So, again, something, something screwy going on there. Um, but yeah, that's where this server is, so I'm going to call it 90% complete. Um, feeling pretty good about it. Um, this video is coming to you from this server, so this server is now ingesting this footage and then we'll be spitting this out into a video file that I can run through DaVinci Resolve on this server and then crunch that video and upload it to YouTube. Um, yeah, so that is kind of the state of this server. Um, it is in the rack. Um, I'm still not very happy about the rack rails not being true rails and it actually got worse in so far as the server has handles on all four corners to allow you to lift this very heavy server and again in all of their wisdom gigabyte designed the back handles in such a way that they conflict with being able to be installed in the server cabinet. So you have to take the back handles off of the server and then manhandle the beast into the server rack. Really, really don't like this scenario. Um, Gigabyte engineers, this one was a fail. Um, I know what you were trying to do, and I understand the goal, but good gravy, usability is a thing. And as much as I harp on HP and some of these other guys, when it comes to being able to service and maintain, they do a lot better job. So yeah, I'm just gonna put that out there. But um, the server itself, is relatively quiet now, so I'm re, you know, running this encode process on there, and things are moving along very nicely. Um, not really experiencing any issues. Um, fans are staying about where they should in that 10-15% range. As they start to ramp, you will definitely hear it. But for average everyday task, it's pretty, pretty quiet. Um, so the air conditioner unit is louder than the server is. Um, you can still kind of hear 
the pitch difference in between the two, but the, the air conditioning unit is definitely louder. Um, so yeah, with that, um, that is what this server is doing right now and is running pretty darn well. Um, now that we got a lot of the major issues and hurdles taken care of, I think we're in a lot better position. Um, so that leads me to the state of the rest of the system. So why did I put this one in and what is going to happen with the other servers? So the file server, as soon as the CPUs come in, the file server is getting its processors back. It will be going back in 100% the way that it was, no changes. Um, the file server, I have to say has been rock solid. Um, the only times it has gone down are when I have asked it to go down. Other than that, it is up, it is chugging along, and has not missed a beat. It is fast, it is reliable, and yeah, just really, really solid. Now, the HP server is a little bit of a different beast. Um, so. What am I planning to do with the HP server if it's not going to be the render server anymore? And that is kind of a mixed bag insofar as right now it is still being used. I'm taking, I've taken all of the RAM out of the HP server to fill this server. Um, realistically, I could pop half of it back in there. I don't need a terabyte of RAM to do what I'm doing, but um, so I may split it 50-50 and just run both that way. Um, it's going to depend on a couple of other things though, because I don't need it up right now, but I plan to bring it back online in the near future. So what does that mean? Um, that server runs particularly well with um, long tasks that I can feed it and not worry about it. Um, it had some usability issues that made it not ideal for the task I was doing. And honestly, it really wasn't ideal for it from the get-go, but goodness, it was a fun project to work on. Um, and so, no, I have no qualms about what I did and where I went with it, but I feel like what I would like to do with that server is a return to my roots scenario. And so what I mean by that is I have off and on, but many years ago was an avid folding at home user. Um, I submitted a ton of work to the cancer research and Alzheimer research, etc., all of the various protein researches that they do, and um, was very, very active for a long time, and still, you know, was active and contributing enough that I remain in the top 2,000 contributors um, out of several million, um, and so what I would like to do is kind of a return to origin on that and set up the HP server as a compute server um, like it was originally intended to do and give it task to fold these proteins and you know do heavy duty research for that organization for the Stanford University. Um, I think that would be a really fun um, way to use that server. And then it can still do other things. Um, by the time, like, uh, Peter Farnsworth there, <laughs> it can do other things too. Um, but I think that would be a really, really cool way to use that server and to give back with what I've worked on and, you know, contribute to the greater good. I, I think that would be a very good use for that server. Now, um, what that means though is I've got a long ways to go um, as far as rebuilding and reconfiguring. I am not in a rush on it, um, but I think 
you know, over time it will be built out to that degree and to that purpose. Um, and so, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Um, or something else in that regard, but um, that is where the HP server is going. Um, right now it sits in the hallway because, um, well, it sits in multiple locations because it's in pieces. But um, what we'll do is we'll kind of get that back together, get it in the rack, and then um, as we have time, we'll work and tinker on that and get that up and going. Um, one of the other things that I would like to do with it is do some testing. Um, there are some ways to use the Windows 11 Pro for workstations, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it's a special edition of Windows designed for high thread count, multi-node, um, super dense servers. Um, servers slash workstations. So it's not you can get the same feature set by doing, you know, one of the Windows Server builds, but I don't need the Windows Server builds. I It's a workstation more than it is a server, so there's no reason to fork out the absurd prices that Windows charges for their server licenses um, for using it as a workstation. So I think Microsoft did a good thing by providing that avenue to be able to use these workstation components and um, get them up and running. So I run Windows 11 Pro for workstations on both this server and the HP server. And all that to say, there are some tweaks and settings that I can try to see if I can transfer files using um, some of the newer Windows file transfer protocols and see if I can break that 25 gigabit barrier that I've been running into. And so that would be very interesting to see if I can make that happen. Um, again, not something I'm rushing out and trying to do, but is something that would be cool to see if we can get going. <laughs> it's funny, if you go back to my original videos, I comment that I've got this um, rack with just a few components in it, and I thought, I'm never going to fill this thing up. And now I have it nearly completely full. So it's it's interesting how things have progressed and changed from what I was originally thinking. And honestly, diving into this, starting with a switch that I was like, I'm going to buy a rack so I can put this stupid switch in there and stop having it fall. Because I was trying to mount this switch to the underside of the desk using double-sided adhere tape. And it kept falling. Um, it was very frustrating. So I was decided to put it in a rack and purchased the rack and then realized, well, if I've got this rack, may as well do something with it. So <laughs> it just kind of snowballed from there. So now I'm three servers deep and three networking switches deep into this setup. And I think I can finally safely cap myself, um, knock on wood, because I have no more space left in the rack to put stuff. But yeah, um, that is kind of where we're at on this and where we're going. So I think this will be a a good, bount, a good stepping stone as we move forward and I'm really looking forward to see what we can accomplish as we get these servers back online and get the configuration all set up. I'll probably do a couple more videos just on the Gigabyte server and um, dive into a few of the things with it but um, once I get all the pros once I get the correct processors in there 
get everything validated and figure out this USB issue, I will do some more updates and um, we'll continue to push out content. So that is where I'm at.